I want to talk real quickly about Gonzalo Lira. He's a U.S. citizen. He was living in Kharkov, Ukraine, and the Ukrainian SBU arrested him. And they arrested him for supporting Russian propaganda. And this comes to us from the Daily Beast. Red pill dating coach Gonzalo Lira accused of shilling for Putin is arrested in Ukraine. So every part of this headline is meant to smear him, uh, deny him any sympathy, and encourage people to cheer on uh, the arrest and uh, eventual jail term that Gonzalo Lira faces. And this is from the Daily Beast. So that should be no surprise. The article says, uh, Ukraine Security Service, SBU, has arrested Gonzalo Lira, a dual citizen of the United States and Chile, uh, who has been living in Kharkov on charges of producing pro-Russian propaganda. So uh, what, what exactly was the pro-Russian propaganda that he is accused of uh, producing? And it's interesting because there's actually a YouTube video put out by the Kharkov Oblast prosecutor's office and they show the evidence uh, so i'm going to play that whole video uh, i'm just going to show you real quick this is their their youtube channel where they published this video and it's about a 30 second well it is a 30 second clip so let's watch that right now vladimir putin he is for all intents and purposes what you would call an ethnic nationalist but he's not an imperialist the Kiev regime i'm, I'm telling you right now uh, it, these people are neo-fascist, neo-Nazis. The West is the one puppeteering Zelensky, right? The Kiev regime also constantly shelling the regions of the Donbass. 16,000 people died after 2015, up until the start of this conflict. You know, 1,000 children or 800 children were killed. So what does he say? He's saying that uh, the Kiev regime uh, consists of neo-fascists and neo-Nazis. Uh, that that is a literal fact. What else is he saying? He's saying that uh, they have been shelling their population. He says from 2015 onward, well, actually from 2014 onward, uh, the client regime the U.S. installed into power in 2014 was killing Russian-speaking Ukrainians around the country and specifically shelling them in the Donbas region. And just, uh, just to point out the fact that this is not actually this is not actually propaganda this isn't pro-russian propaganda these are facts that even the western media and the western governments sponsoring ukraine right now in this war uh, this is fact that they themselves have admitted so let's just take a look here this is from bbc newsnight neo-nazi threat in new ukraine this is from 2014 here's from uh, reuters commentary Ukraine's neo-Nazi problem. This was from 2018. So you can see it's a problem that did not go away. Here's another article from 2018 from The Hill. Congress bans arms to Ukraine militia linked to neo-Nazis. So the problem, the Nazi problem in Ukraine was so bad that defense packages the U.S. was putting together for the Ukrainian government and its armed forces had to be custom tailored to ensure that none of the weapons or support ended up in the hands of Nazis uh, in these units that were officially incorporated in the uh, Ukrainian military. And so this Hill article says, white supremacy and neo-Nazism are unacceptable and have no place in our world. Was that Gonzalo Lira producing pro-Russian propaganda? No, it was a US representative who said that. Uh, uh, Ro Khanna, an outspoken critic of providing lethal aid to Ukraine, uh, said in a statement to The Hill. I am very pleased that the recently passed omnibus prevents the U.S. from providing arms and training assistance to the neo-Nazi Azov Battalion fighting in Ukraine. The United States has been aiding and training Ukrainian forces in their fight against Russian-backed separatists since 2014 and recently expanded that aid to include arms. The omnibus includes about $620.7 million U.S. dollars in aid for Ukraine, including 420.7 million in State Department and Foreign Operations funds and 200 million in Pentagon funds. The Azov Battalion was founded in 2014 and its first commander was uh, Andrei Boletsky, who previously headed the neo-Nazi group Patriot of Ukraine. Several members of the militia, which has been integrated into the Ukrainian National Guard, are self-avowed neo-Nazis. There it is, as plain as day, a fact stated by both the Western media and uh, U.S. government 
representatives. Why is Gonzalo Lira in jail for stating obvious facts? Uh, Gonzalo Lira also said in that video that uh, thousands were killed by the Kiev regime shelling the Donbas region. Again, this is these are these are undeniable facts that the West itself has admitted. So this is from Human Rights Watch, a pro-Western, a supposed human rights organization that often will look the other way when human rights abuses are taking place. Uh, but in this case, they say, and this is from 2014, Ukraine, widespread use of cluster munitions, government responsible for cluster attacks on Donetsk. Here's another one from Amnesty International, another one of these pro-Western uh, so-called human rights organizations, even they are admitting it, albeit blaming both sides. Eastern Ukraine, both sides responsible for indiscrim indiscriminate attacks. And then we have this from AFP via uh, Yahoo News. Surgeons in Ukraine's rebel Donetsk confirm cluster bomb usage. And in this article, and you can look at, take a look at this, these tiny metal darts that Ukraine was shooting at the civilian population of Donetsk. It says surgeons in East Ukraine's rebel hub of Donetsk, where dozens of civilians have died in recent weeks, confirmed that some of the patients were victims of cluster bombs, as alleged by Human Rights Watch. So Human Rights Watch is making the accusation, and you're seeing the, the evidence for yourself in the photo, the, the flashé rounds. Some of the patients were victims of cluster bombs as alleged uh, by Human Rights Watch, although Kiev ven vehemently denied that its troops battling the pro-Russian insurgency in the East are using the, convention the controversial and indiscriminate cluster munitions. Medics claimed Ukrainian forces were at fault. And they said it, you know, even pro-Western rights groups that would probably prefer to look the other way were unable to deny it. So there are Nazis in Ukraine, in the government, in the armed forces, entire units made up of Nazis. They, they act as if Azov is, is no longer a Nazi military formation. They still are using Nazi symbols on their flags and on their uniforms. So that is a fact. That is a fact that even the U.S. government had to admit and deal with. Uh, and you just saw the evidence from the Western media and from Western so-called human rights groups admitting that Ukraine was shelling their own population. We also have documents like this from the UN itself talking about conflict-related civilian casualties in Ukraine. And this was dated 27 January 2022. And actually, they, they break down all of the casualties. Down here, it says total conflict-related casualties in Ukraine in 2014 to 2021. The OHC, the OHCHR estimates the total number of conflict-related casualties in Ukraine from 14th April 2014 to 31 December 2021 to be 51,000 to 54,000, 14,200 to 14,400 killed, at least 3,404 civilians, uh, estimated 404,000 Ukrainian forces, and estimated 6,500 members of armed groups and 37 to 39,000 injured, 3, 000, uh, 7,000 to 9,000 civilians, 13,800 uh, to 14,200 Ukrainian forces, and 15,800 to 16,200 members of armed groups. So there you have it from the UN itself. Ukraine was shelling their own population in eastern Ukraine, and they were killing thousands of people, just as Gonzalo Lira said. And this is why he was arrested. He was arrested for stating facts that have been admitted by all. Now, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, the U.S. Department of State, the Kiev, the U.S. Embassy in Kiev, all utterly silent. The majority of the Western media utterly silent on this very public arrest. They, the Ukrainian SBU announced this. They published videos of the arrest. They took a video and published the arrest online for everyone to see. And yet we're hearing nothing from the U.S. government, Gonzalo Lira being a U.S. citizen, nothing at all from them, nothing at all from these supposed human rights organizations who would, if this was in Russia, uh, we would be hearing nothing else but condemnation of Russia and a demand for their immediate release, no matter what it was they were accused of doing. Gonzalo Lira very clearly, according to the Kharkov Oblast Prosecutor's Office, was arrested for stating blatant facts. Uh, so we need to we need to speak up. We need to put pressure on these 
these hypocrites who we sh shouldn't expect anything from, but we need to expose them and put pressure on them. Even if they say something superficial and without any intention at all to back it up, it, it could make a difference. Just imagine if it was you. And I know other people out there are saying, oh, I didn't like Gonzalo Lira. He said a lot of things that I didn't agree with. Well, do you, do you agree with him that Nazis are bad and that they've infested Ukraine? And do you agree that Ukraine was shelling its civilian population and that that was wrong? On this issue, you can agree with him on. These other things that you don't like about him, who, whoever he supported politically, whatever things he said regarding race and religion and gender, that's not why they arrested him. They arrested him for speaking up about Nazis and shelling civilians. So on this issue, it should be very easy to find common ground to speak up about this. It's Gonzalo Lira today that you might make some sort of excuse for not speaking up about it could be someone else that you have much more respect and much more in common with uh, arrested and bundled off tomorrow so just keep all of that in mind and it could even be you eventually someday if you allow this type of uh, injustice to go unchecked in the video description below i am going to put a list of uh, accounts on Twitter that you can tag and put pressure on these people, uh, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, the U.S. Embassy in Kiev, uh, the U.S. State Department, uh, various uh, figureheads at Human Rights Watch. Put pressure on these people. Humiliate them with their, their silence, their silence complicity. Uh, RT came out immediately at the top of the hour talking about Gonzalo Lira's arrest. The Western media is utterly silence, and silence in this case is complicity.